I hadn't, um, I got rid of some of Jaffer's things, but I, I didn't get rid of everything. I, I have to have something to remind me of him around. Something that would make me feel like he's still here, like that picture and other pictures I have of him. I have to. Now, today, I can bring his picture into my house, but honest to God, it was just this year that I allow a picture of him in my house. So you didn't have pictures of him in your home? It's just this year when someone asked me to come out and tell my story that I was able to put a picture in my house. That's how dramatically it affected me when he got killed. You never know when someone take your son from you unexpectedly how it tears that big hole, put, that hole, put a big hole in your heart. It was crazy, you know, all of it was. I didn't look at this city the same anymore. I felt like I was in a twilight zone. I drive past people and everybody looked so normal and so unbothered. And these people that just put 49 and 52 holes in my son, how could it be normal? Stood up over him with a shotgun. There's nothing normal about it. These pictures here represent, represent families, family supporting, supporting families, families against police violence. I made a frame for my son's picture and her son's picture. Miss Ann, when we first met, where we first met? Where did we first met? We met at the Capitol. We was advocating for George Floyd. And that was my first time seeing you or hearing your story. I couldn't believe that there were others out there like mine. But I was stunned when I heard you talk about the way they killed your son. Yes. It touched me in a way that it almost just took my breath. Your story did too. I couldn't believe it happened all those years ago and no one talked about it. Yes. My name is Marilyn Hill. My son was Demetrius Hill. He was killed in April 28, 1997 in Westminster Apartments in St. Paul, Minnesota. My son was shot six times by the St. Paul police in the apartment building where my mother and father lived at. My son was a good boy. Yes. He, um, he was going to school. Mm -hmm. He had a fiance. He was graduating. He had a career. He was gonna go to college. And for them to kill him, My name is Matilda Smith. My friends and family called me Miss Ann. My son was killed May 9th, 2016 by St. Paul Police. And since that day, my whole life changed. When BCA come over and told me that you killed my child, shot him all those times, I went all the way back to his birth. And I just went to thinking. I went to thinking about his baby days. 
his toddler days, his child days, his teen days, and on up until he was 33 years old. When they killed him, everything about him reminded me of Jesus. They shot him in both hands. He had two holes in both hands. I thought about how they spit Jesus' hands. I looked at his body and he had all these bullets. Even one behind the head. He had bullets from the chest all the way down. I looked at his feet under both feet, two bullet holes on the both feet. I looked at Jesus again and seen how they had thrown his feet together with those holes in it. I looked up and I said, God, is this what I'm supposed to say? Forgive them, they not know what they do. And I just burst out, went to laugh it out. I didn't know. You and I are very strong because we're survivors. We are. And I tell you, I didn't think I was, I was that strong. I didn't think I would survive something like this. Me either. And I thought I was gonna die. I think I almost did. I can relate to you because when they killed my son, it, it's like somebody just took my heart and put a big old hole in it, like they put a hole in my son's heart. Yes. It was pain. It was so painful to cry. And when I tried to cry, I felt like I was going to die. Yes. And I couldn't talk to nobody because it hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. So I can understand what you're saying when you lose someone you dearly love. Oh, yeah. And I so appreciate you because you and I have something in common. Yes, we do. And we can share something that's gifted yeah. that we can receive together and understand where we're going with it. Yes. And so that was makes me really close to you because mm -hmm. we've been down that road together. Yes. Yes. And it's healing. It is healing. It's healing when you know that you can talk to somebody. And when you know that you're not alone. Yes. Oh my God, I thought I, and I when it happened to me, I felt so alone. I felt no one understands me. No one would understand me unless they went through this. And, Ms. Ann, um, what are you doing today that is helpful? Well, I tell you what has been helpful for me. God has shown me a hidden talent. Now I went to church and they was they were talking about finding our hidden talents. And they put this picture out here and said, oh, you gotta paint this one. I looked at those pictures, I said, uh-uh, I can't do that. Is there anyone you that reminds you of Jennifer? Oh my God. That one, that's sugar. Her name was Sugar. And Jaffa would ride the horse. That one remind me of him a lot. He always broke sugar. I knew that that was a gift that God gave me for my healing. And yours is sewing. I make, I made these. And every time I make a set, she always be the first one. I got to I have get it. the first one that she makes that's beautiful. And I said, that she said, oh, well, I'm gonna say, I'll, I'll buy it right now. This was a, <laughs> this is what I said. one. And so it's a this mask. Is my new one, and I have the mask to go with. Go with it. Thank you. We support each other. I support you, and, I support and you support me with my paintings. Yes. So that is our gifts. By us sharing our story, we helping other mothers understand that you're not out here by yourself, and you're not alone. By us protesting, it gets people to understand this is violence.
This is police brutality. People all over in the world need to know that something needs to change.